Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? Wow, you look like thankful people. Thanksgiving treated Amen. you well, I see. If you're in the lobby, make your way in and we're going to get started. Uh, it's a, quite a rainstorm monsoon outside, but it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Is anybody, anybody happy with the holidays? I know I'm enjoying my family and the goodness of God. And doesn't this place look beautiful? Thank you to, just want to say thanks to all the volunteers that came out on Sunday and helped us um, <clears throat> make this place look awesome. And what a gift, what a blessing from our Lord. So, but uh, today is our first day of our Advent series and we are centering ourselves on hope. And I have some two some of the two most beautiful people that I know, Chuck and Mona Clements, right here, and they're going to walk us through um, hope this morning. So, guys, if you could take it away. All right. Folks, today is the first Sunday of the Advent season. Advent marks the start of a season of preparation that looks forward to the celebration of Christmas and also the second coming of Christ. It's a time of reflection in preparing our hearts for the coming of Jesus as we remember how our Savior humbled himself to be born as a baby and live among those whom one day he would save. We remember the perfect life he lived doing the will of the Father his sacrificial death on the cross and how he was raised from the dead three days later, having paid the penalty to save all who would believe. Christians remember Jesus' promise to return again one day and restore everything fully. This season invokes feelings of expectation and most importantly, hope. The word advent comes from the Latin word adventus, meaning arrival or coming. Advent is a reminder of how the Jewish people waited for the Messiah and how Christians wait for the second coming of Christ today. Advent season begins this Sunday, today, and ends the day before Christmas on December the 24th. Why do people celebrate event, event, event with a wreath and candles? The Advent wreath first appeared in Germany in 1839. A Lutheran minister working at a mission for children created the wreath out of the wheel of a cart. He placed 20 small red candles and four large candles on the wheel. The red candles were lit on weekdays and the four white candles were lit on Sundays. Over the years, the Advent wreath became a wreath created out of evergreen symbolizing everlasting life in the midst of winter and death. The circle reminds us of God's unending love and the eternal life he makes possible. There are five candles placed on the wreath. Three purple candles and one pink candle are placed in the wreath, and one white candle is placed in the center. Each of the four candles in the wreath represents the four Sundays of Advent, and the white candle in the center, called the Christ candle, is lit on Christmas Day. The first candle symbolizes hope and is called the prophet's candle. The prophets of the Old Testament, especially Isaiah, waited in hope for the Messiah's arrival. Together, we will light the candle of hope.
Let us hear from the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. Very familiar passages. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, you are the hope in our messy world. This advent helped us slow down. Listen to your voice and focus on what's really important. We place our hope in you as we prepare our hearts to celebrate your birth on Christmas. Amen. All right, these, the sound of the bells at Christmas season is a time of celebration and hope for the future. The bells are ringing out the news that our Savior has come and there is hope for all in this world filled with chaos and trouble. As you leave the service today, we ask that you pick up a bell ornament at the door and you, along with your family, place it on the Christmas tree in the lobby as you leave and as you do so, remember what it represents, hope. Amen. Y'all ready to worship? Y'all centered on hope today? Why don't you stand with us? Let's worship together.
name to glorify glorify the name of all names oh nothing can stand against and i choose to pray to glorify glorify the name of all names nothing can stand against oh yes i will you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Singing, yes, I will, and for all my days. Singing, yes, I will. For all my days, singing yes, yes I
to save you stepped into the chaos as it was and you accepted us for who we are and God we love you and we just want to say thank you this morning thank you for your hope that you're giving us for the grace that you're giving us to walk out this life we bless you
came from heaven to earth you made a way come on can you just lift him up in this place can you just bless the name of the Lord for what he's done for who he is magnificent in all his ways the hope of the nations the hope of your life the lover of your soul Jesus
upon buried body began to breathe out of the silence this one more time. Then came the morning that sealed the
again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've been to a many gravesite, but I've never seen someone who was dead begin to breathe again. But I want you to know there was the first fruits of the resurrection, and his name was Jesus Christ. And he said, Because I live, you can live also. Because I live, the grave has no claim on you. I don't know about you, but that excites me. Woo! If Paul said, if in this life we have hope only, we're of all men most miserable. But I'm here to tell you, my hope ain't only here. My hope is in Jesus, who is here and is in the world to come. And I'm looking forward to that time when we're going to see him again face to face. Woo, there won't be no more sickness, no more pain, no more dying, no more death, no more disappointment, no more bills, no more meals to cook, no more... I'm telling you what, don't you want to go? What a brochure for a place called heaven. I done signed up and got my ticket and I'm ready to go. Looks so good to see you. These are all the Christians that are not fair weather Christians. You came out and got your boat and floated on in. And we're so glad to have you in the house of the Lord. Good to see Mama in the house of the Lord today. She's my age, but I can still call her Mama. Good to see her in the house of the Lord. Good to have Mark's parents here. And it's so good to have Jesus in the house. Aren't you glad he's here? The master of the ceremonies. Oh, I appreciate you being here. And we appreciate all those watching by way of internet. Welcome uh, to New Covenant Church that's going to have a throwdown in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, God is going to do some things. If you're here this morning, there's several that mentioned that wanted prayer after the service. Pastor John will be praying for you after the service. So just get ready to have God do whatever you need done in your life because He's here and He can even send His word while He's preaching. Healing can go forth and minister to you right there where you sit. That's how powerful the word of God is. It goes and accomplishes whatever the Spirit of God sends it to do. And I appreciate all of you being here. The, the We're going to have preschool only. Those under uh, are going out. Some of our teachers were sick today, so we had a little change in plans. But all the preschoolers uh, can be dismissed if you're not already gone and uh, go out and be in a church on your age. So we appreciate all of our workers and those that are here in the house of the Lord. We're going to receive our offering this morning and I want to tell you when we give we should be cheerful about giving you know you I often said that the IRS don't trust you they ain't gonna wait till the end of the year for you to give they're gonna take it out of your check every week whether you want them to or not doesn't matter if you got a bill, or, but Jesus trusts us. He said, I want you to give in obedience to my word. And when we're obedient to his word, how many know blessing after blessing just keeps on following me? And I tell you, I thank God for what he does and how he works because his word's true. You know, some people change their mind. They'll tell you, oh, we can do this and this and this. And then you go, okay, and you start doing it. And they're like, oh, no, no, I changed my mind. I want all my money now. But God tells you the way it is, and it's the same. You can trust Him, and He is a God who meets every need. So we're going to give as unto the Lord. Bless you as you give here. You can give at the Next Step desk or online, ever how you feel comfortable. But the ushers are coming to wait on you for your offering. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living. these awesome junior ushers when David Wilkerson used to take his offering he had the gang members take it and Nikki Cruz was taking the offering and he 
went down and they didn't put enough in. So he pulled back and let them see his knife on his head. And they dug in and got some more. So you better be glad for these junior ushers because I don't think they packing or carrying. But uh, we appreciate their work in the Lord and your uh, giving. Father, we thank you for this offering, Lord. We give it unto you, Father, to feather your kingdom and to feather your work, God. We thank you, Lord, for blessing those that have been obedient to what your word says. Uh, Father, meet every need in their life. Father, sometimes it may just be health. Sometimes it may be a financial blessing. But Father, ever how it comes, we give you glory and we give you honor for the faithfulness of your promises in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. Well, God bless you for your giving. Thank you so much. We're also doing something that is called Gloves of Love. And we're asking everybody to bring in five pairs of kids' size gloves. We've got HH Beam School that we're going to be giving these uh, gloves to. There's 540 students. Uh, so we're wanting to get 540 pairs of gloves uh, so that each uh, child will have a pair of gloves. When you bring them in by next Sunday is the dead line bring it in and drop it in the baskets by the next step desk and we're going to see that these kids uh, uh, get these gloves and also uh, next Sunday is the Sunday that we're going to be talking about love today we're talking about hope and then next Sunday we're going to be talking about love so we just thought it would be kind of neat if everybody would just wear some red if you ain't got red you get to go shopping so where, I figured the women are like that. The men will be like, nah. But, you know, the women go, okay, okay, I got to wear red, honey. Got to go to the store. But just get some red and let's put it on because it represents the love that we have in Jesus. And uh, so be sure and do that for next Sunday. And also we've got Tanglewood Festival of Lights that's coming up. We've got uh, some buses uh, uh, chartered. Uh, so you're going to be able to travel like you're going on a trip. It, it'll be like a little mission trip. That's all I'm going to say. Just a little mission trip to Winston-Salem. So you might can handle that instead of New Mexico or Haiti or Africa or somewhere. But we're just going to be traveling up to uh, Tanglewood. They, they've got over 80 displays of lights and sound. And they've also got a little place in the middle where they'll be stopping. There's S'moresville. And you can go in and shop or pick up something to eat. So you'll want to take some extra money for that. And it's only $5 to be be able to go on the bus. Now that's cheap. If you take a car up there, you got your gas money. Your gas money. Come on, that's a lot right there. And then whatever it costs to get in, and there ain't no bathrooms in your car. I'm just saying, but they are on that bus, and they're going to be a whole lot of fun people riding that bus. So if you would like to go, today is the last day to sign up and to pay your money to go uh, to Tanglewood. So you can see me at the uh, back desk on your way out if you would like to go and have not signed up, and we'll get you signed up because today is the final day to pay. So we thank you for, uh, and, and right now it's just limited to church attenders. If that changes, uh, I'm sure someone will let let you know and then we've got tables of joy that is coming up uh, and we want you to sign up at the next step desk so you can make Christmas cookies uh, and we're asking uh, for December the 11th uh, for uh, families to bring four dozen of their favorite uh, cookies uh, and we're going to have a cookie bar uh, after the service that day so that's uh, coming up on the 11th the Sunday that that I know someone who's going to be preaching that Sunday. Uh, so you're going to get cookies and me. So maybe we should let them get the cookies first so they got something to eat while I'm long-winded. No, I don't know. We'll just wait till afterwards. I'll try not to be long. <clears throat> But anyhow, I want to tell you something. We appreciate all the activities and things that we have going. And uh, so if you want to sign up and bring cookies that day, uh, be sure and sign up at the Next Step desk. And you can tell us what kind of cookies you're planning on uh, baking up. So we appreciate you in the house of the Lord. How many appreciate the voice and the first lady of this house. I love these people, and I'm so thankful for them. And we just want to love our pastor and his wife and let them know how much we appreciate the word that comes forth out of him. So just give him a good hand like you really mean it, and thank pastor for coming.
Well, I'm surprised you're all here. <laughs> I figured it rained, you know, you never know. Uh, is anybody here have the middle name Mary? Anybody? Mary, Mary, Mary. Who? Okay. Uh, I'm supposed to pray for you for some reason. Okay. So would you please stand up and... Uh, I just see in your heart something that's uh, brewing and you've been dealing with, and uh, it's been weighing you down. I don't know anything I don't know at all, Sylvie. I didn't even know your middle name was Mary. Uh, but the Lord said, let me know that you've been faithful, and you've been committed, and God is going to see it through. You can't help, I don't know why you're saying this, but you can't help everyone. Okay, and uh, don't get upset because of that, because that's just the way it is. And so, Father God, I just thank you for Sylvie right now, that you minister to her. Yes. Sylvie, Mary, Lord God, and thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for touching her heart. Let her not, Lord, we cast it. Just lift, just lift it up to the Lord right now, like this, Sylvie. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the word and for the power of God that, that, that comes in the name of Jesus to heal, minister. What you can't do, God can do. You stop carrying that thing, the Lord says. He is your caretaker. You can't do what he can do. So let, just cast it over to the Lord. You stop carrying it. Stop carrying I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just saying what the Lord said. Stop carrying that and give it over to the Lord. And say, here it is, God. I just give it to you. I know this is also a difficult time for you in a year. And the Lord says, don't worry about it. I got everything under control. Live your life with me in joy. Amen. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's a neat thing I do before I like to start here. And uh, it's called centering down. It's such a neat practice that the Quakers used to have. Maybe uh, it's good to have Don and Kathy here always. In Jesus' name, we love them and our family. How many appreciate Pastor Mark? Isn't he something? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there's a neat thing about centering down. So before we start here today, what centering down means uh, is not something that was just picked up by Quakers. It was something that was, uh, that's biblical. Uh, the area of center within your life is your spirit. Your spirit uh, is located within the center of of your being that was indicated in the scripture as the belly okay that's why they said out of your belly shall flow rivers so the center of you is somewhere within this vicinity okay and one of the things that the quakers used to practice and uh, i think it's a good practice for you they used to do these things with their hands okay and i want you to do this right now put your hands out like this right now and that was an end you can bring them in so you don't have to stretch yourself too much and that was an indication that you're giving up you're giving up things that are holding you down so i want you to close your eyes come on in jesus name i want you to give up all your troubles all your problems your sicknesses your finance your relationships that are soured your the time of the year that might hold you down just give it up just kind of cast it down upon the lord and and just do that for a minute and just kind of rest in that for right now. Just rest in that for a few minutes and let him know that you can't do it. Sometimes you think you can hold on to things and, and take care of them, but you can't. And you need to give it over to the Lord. Cast all your care upon the Lord. There it is. Just give it to the Lord. Now I want you, if you're ready, just kind of turn your hands over like this, like this. And just, that's receiving, okay? That's where you're opening up your heart. You're centering down. You're centering down, Holy Spirit, whatever it is you have for me, whatever it is you want from me, whatever it is you guide me. You see, the Christian life is a spirit life. You are born of the Spirit. You are then, of course, filled with the Spirit, and you are now to be led by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. 
to be led by him who is inside of you, who has been joined together. That word joined means you are glued with God. God and your spirit are one. You are a divine human being and you are not God, but you are God inside of you right now. Amen. Inside you right now to perform, to act, to do, to think, to be all that God has for you. In the name of Jesus. Just say to the Lord, I receive it right now. In the name of the Lord. Amen. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Come on, give up thanks right now. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You know, you don't need other things. What you need is Jesus. It's Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. Amen. That's what you need. That's what you need. That's what hope is all about. That's what this day is all about. That's what your life should be all about. It's about him. It's about living in him. You see, this world is sustained by him. This world was created for him. You were created for him. So we look at that today in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not a traditional guy, as you know, in Jesus' name, so I know what to do. I'm I'm prepared enough in my life. One of the secrets of success in life is not just the desire to win, but the desire to be prepared to win. And what that means is, is you can wish all you want to be successful here, but if you don't take the time and the energy and the initiative to build yourself up, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, just wishing something upon you will not make you what someone something can be if you prepare yourself, Amen. if you get ready for God. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I stay ready. My most enjoyable times are with the Lord. My most precious times are in his word, that he can feed me and help me because, you know, that's what it's all about. Amen? Amen. I said that's what it's all about. I mean, you have your life, but there is no life outside of him. Everything else is just a filler. Everything else is just something you're going through. He is your life. Amen. He is all you need. Right. I said, he's all you need. Yeah. Some of you here might be facing, and I'm not getting to my message yet, but that's okay. But some of you might be facing some tragic thing physically. You know, you have that burden upon you to weigh out, what is this? How can I do this? What can I do? Even myself, I, I always had this thought, and the Lord corrected me this past two weeks where I have this weight over me that I have to look at all the time because of the condition that has been pronounced over my body, but I now am healed. And I felt like this is just a heavy thing. But the Lord corrected me. He says, why are you carrying something you can't carry? Why are you trying to think about something you can't do anything about except with me? He says, I'm your caretaker. I'm the one that can sustain you. I'm the hope. I'm the one that can help you. Why don't you give that thing to me? And I don't know about you, but if you're carrying something right now, that was for you. If you're carrying something right now that you are, that's pressing you down, you understand, Diabolos is the, is a, is a compound name for the devil, and it means to put pressure on. And what the devil would like to do with you in every instance of your life is to put pressure on you so it can hold you down, hold you under, and, and keep you in a state of despair. Are you all hearing me today? Amen. And so we need to understand what that is. It's not you, but it's Christ in you, the hope of glory that can sustain you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So we're just excited now about having you all. I, <laughs> I said, Lord, it's going to rain. I hope they come out. You know how it is with many Christians. One drop of rain will keep them all away. Say amen. So you are really special people. Would you just thank God for being special in him? Amen. 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 Glory to God. I'm supposed to speak on hope. Hallelujah. I'm going to Mexico in a week and a half, in a week, so you pray for me too. So I'll be suffering down there uh, with 80-degree uh, weather near the beach. And 
Just terrible, isn't it? Something, somebody's got to do that. <laughs> so you pray for me, seriously. We'll have a pastor's conference that I'm being part of down here in Okasa or something like that, uh, right near above Guatemala. And uh, so uh, it's going to be a wonderful time just to get away, especially, wouldn't you like to get away during Christmas season and just get away? And Well, one of us does. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's begin here today. I know that I got that out of me, and I wanted to share that with you. So Jesus is our hope. What does that mean? When we look at biblical hope, we, we defined it as something that is good and can occur. But biblical hope is more than that. It's not a hope so. It's actually a no so. It's a expectation. We actually use the word with a mother that is ready to give her child birth. She's expecting. She has something planted inside of her that she knows is coming. It's not like, I hope. <laughs> hey, lady, you know it's coming. Say amen. amen. It's coming. It presses against you. It's inside of you. It makes you think about it all the time. It kicks you. Come on now. It's there because you know so. Well, that's what biblical hope is. And I want you to know that in this world, we need to understand that there is a hope, a hope that is beyond the natural. But the world can't give that to you because what the world tries to give you, it doesn't last. We've all tried it. Some of you who are young yet and going through the experiential part of your life maybe have not figured that out. But over time, you will figure that out. You'll find out that all the stuff you thought was so important really was not. And what you could do is really depend upon, how many know what I'm talking about? And then there's people. You know, people without Jesus are hopeless. The world without Jesus is hopeless. There's nothing. There's nothing there. I don't care what religious background you are. There's only one religion, and that is Jesus Christ as the Son of God and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad you follow the truth? And that the Word of God is true. And it's not a lie. Yeah. Hallelujah. And what it said it is true. And it will do. This is why the coming of Jesus is so important. We call it Advent. And what we mean by that is the coming of someone <coughs> special. The arrival. The arrival. So we have this arrival of someone. The arrival of Jesus. Why? Why was that so unique? Why is that so important? Why is that something that we need to look at as significant? And also something that is a part of our life. The hope of Jesus. You know, when we look at the fact that a hope is something, it's not a thing. Actually, when you look at God, God is the personification of all good. Everything good. There is no evil in him. I mean, thank God we don't serve an evil God. Amen. The devil is evil. The devil's a liar. The devil's a loser. The, dev the devil's going to Gehenna. Can you hear me that? Amen? And I'm not talking about Ohio. Because there is a Gehenna, Ohio, if you didn't know. Amen. We're talking about H-E-L-L. -L, and that's where he's going. And all those who don't know Jesus. That's why we need to spread the message of hope. The message of hope. See, the fact is it's not a thing. It is a person. And that person's name is Jesus. Jesus is his name. And he's hope. Hope was what the angels sang about. Hope was lying in a manger. Hope caused Mary's heart to wonder. It was hope that the shepherds came to worship. It was hope that was brought gifts to Jesus by the Magi that came from a faraway place. It was the hope of God. The hope of God. The hope of God. Not man. 
Not the, cust not the government. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. We know that's so screwy and squirrely we don't even know. Aren't you glad that the Bible says we're really not of this world? Yes. We're in it, but we're not of it. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for that in Jesus' name. So we need to understand this is why the coming of Christ to earth is a hope story. Because he has hope for a fallen world. Hope for a fallen person. Hope for a fallen situation. Hope for financial blessings. Hope expectancy and knowing that God is there as the hope giver. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You see, it's quite evident that there are many today that can't even help themselves. They can't help others as well. The only way we're going to be able to help people is by giving and offering the message of hope. And in him we live. And in him we move. And in him we have our being. That's how we'll live in the hereafter. The Bible even teaches us that when we go to heaven, we won't have blood. Why won't we have blood? I don't know about you, but I always ask kind of goofy questions to the Lord, and he's able to answer me. Aren't you glad for that? You know, the reason why we don't have blood is because the Bible teaches us in the, in the Old Testament, <coughs> excuse me, that life is in the blood. When the, the blood of an animal was given, it meant that the life of that animal was sacrificed that they can obtain life. Well, the life of the animal is in the blood. Eternal life is in the blood of Jesus. And because of that, we now can go to heaven. And when we're in heaven, we don't need blood because we're sustained by God. Everything. Will just move in his presence and his, it's just like you're, you're, you're connected. You ever see these things, you put it down on something and they're connected and they can be charged? Well, that's what it's going to be like it's to some extent when you're in heaven. You're just charged consistently with God. Isn't that something? And God is endless. That means you live forever. I said, you live forever. I can't imagine living forever. It's hard enough 80, 90 years that I'm going to live, or 97, in Jesus' name. It's, it's hard enough to understand that. Amen? But imagine trillions of years upon trillions. There won't be no time. Time is a creation, an indication of a, a place of, of, of things. So we need to know that there is none. We live in what is called the... Man, this is good. The now of God. The now of God is consistent. The now of God is now. The now of God is now. The now of God is always now. It's always. It's never ending. We live in the constant state of now. I said we live in the constant state of now. Now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. So it's, we need to understand. There's a lot of people messed up in this world. How many were messed up before they came to Jesus? Amen? So it's so important that we understand what God is doing when we talk about that. Hallelujah. We need to understand we were messed up. I was messed up. How many were really messed up? Okay, raise your hand, and you're not proud of it, but you were really messed up. You were druggy, you were messed up, you're a thief, and you're whatever you were, and some of you were just religious fanatical people. Some of you, you were all goofy. Amen? Look to your neighbor and says, he's really talking about you. <laughs> I thought you would enjoy that. It felt good, didn't it? That's called your flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the thing that we really need then is divine help. We really do. There's no way out of this thing. It's, it has to be a, the person. This, the only solution is called a savior. Yeah. The savior is one who rescues and comes to save. And so that's what we needed. We rescues from all danger. So we needed somebody that was good enough, that was wise enough, that was powerful enough, that was righteous enough, and the only one that can fulfill that 
kind of agenda is God. I mean, God's the only one. There's nothing like God is good. When we say that, we really un don't understand the complete ramifications of that. We don't understand what it's really like to see God is really good beyond your knowledge right now. Because God is so good that he has all eternity to show us how good he is. Wow. That's awesome. I can't wait. How about you? Amen. I can wait, but I thank God I can't wait. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I got a lot to do yet while I'm here on planet earth. Hallelujah. So we need God. He's, he came in the flesh. You know, you talk about a great sci-fi movie. This is awesome. I mean, God comes in the flesh. Can you imagine meeting God in the flesh? Hello, Jesus. That's powerful. God in the flesh coming. And here's the strangest thing about God in the situation that he came to see. The one rejected was the one who came to, reject, to save the rejecter. The one who was rebelled against came to save those who were rebellious against him. It blows your mind to think that God looks beyond your present condition. Isn't that wonderful? He looks beyond what you are now to what you can be in him. And that's the neat thing about God. Because when he looks at you and you have accepted him, he doesn't see you as you were. He sees you as what you can become. Now unto him that is able to finish that which he has started. And he will start it in us already. Hallelujah. So God is doing this. He didn't come to set up his kingdom on earth. You know, I always wondered about the politics of Jesus. And I'm going to speak on that for just a brief moment because I don't like politics that much. How many like politics? Doesn't it stink? Amen. I, it just kind of stinks. But you think about the politics of Jesus. He really didn't go around and, and be political. He went around and preached kingdom. Because he realized something. This world can't do it. He had another place in mind. That, that he didn't come to set up his kingdom on earth yet. Hallelujah. He did not come to judge or condemn. He didn't come to do that. He came to serve, to suffer, to die so that his kingdom can come and be in the hearts of mankind. Now, I want you to get this. The kingdom of God, because you believe, is now in you. It's right here. You are mobile temples. You are the housing of God. The Holy Spirit. I love that scripture. And it tells us that we are one spirit. We are joined together. That really is a neat revelation that you need to, to, to kind of memorize and just marinate in your heart for about a couple of years. Because what that really means is that you're glued together. That you're no longer two, but you're one. Can you imagine? No wonder God said all things are possible to him that believes. Because the one who's in you is the one that makes everything possible. And the only difference between you and anything from getting from God is your belief system. Because the Bible teaches us that everything can be possible to him who believes. Hallelujah. So you're the one that limits God. God doesn't limit himself to you. It's your understanding and comprehension there too. He came to seek and to save. He came to suffer and forgive. He came to rescue. You see, changing the hearts of the person is a key to changing the person and the nations of the world. So our primary objective, and yes, you can serve in political arena, is not just to do that, but to spread the gospel of the kingdom. Because that's the only thing that can change a man. That's the only thing that can change a town. That's the only thing that can change a nation. That's the only thing that can root out, root out any kind of racism or hatred or, or bigotry or, or, or hatred in any manner. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the hope of God. It's the power of God that can change you. The only reason... They're not changed because their heart is still the same. 
Hallelujah. He came not because, and because of this, sinners can be forgiven. The sick can have hope. The needy can be delivered from everything. Hallelujah. From their bondage. You know, there's a lot of people in bondage today, even in the church. There are. There's people that are definitely delivered and, 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 and need deliverance from the, from the powers of Satan. In Jesus' name. My phone is talking to me, so I'm going to turn it off, okay? Hallelujah. Isn't that weird when you have somebody talking in your head? <laughs> it's saying, I didn't understand that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Hallelujah. That's right, you can't understand it. You need Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. The thing about it is, hope is really a person. Again, his name is? Jesus. In Jesus' name. And before Jesus went to the cross, he revealed his mission and his identity to the world. He revealed it in John. John was such a wonderful apostle. He's the only one of the, uh, of the 12 that didn't die. He had to, they put him, had to put him on Patmos. They threw him in a vat of oil, and he, he jumps out, not even burned. They put him on an island, and to our knowledge, we don't know if he ever died, but well, I'm sure he did. But he doesn't have any recollection or record of that. John was a powerful person. He was the one that placed his head upon the, the bosom of Jesus at all times because he was so close. It wasn't something freaky or weird. It was a love of God. How many love God with all their heart in Jesus' name? And John records these words about his master. Jesus said these words, I am. That's the neat thing about God. He reveals himself, the ego ami. Now, you might not know what that means, but he's the, the very one that was in the Old Testament at Mount Sinai where Moses climbed up and there behind the burning bush was someone talking to him that was not of this world, but, this, but yet the creator of the world. And he said, I am that I am. And here we have Jesus uttering these same words, ego ami, I am. And then he says this. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one, no man comes to unto the Father but by or through me. There is no other way. Zoroaster is not the way. Buddha is not the way. Shinto is all the other religions are not the way. Moon, Reverend Sun, Moon, Moon is not the way. There's only one way, and that is the way of Jesus Christ. Amen? There's only one way. Hallelujah. There's not many ways. There's only one. He is the only hope for the world. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, and I'm going to break this down a little bit. He is the only way to God. That is our hope. And because of Adam's sin, it created a huge separation that we sang about just a few minutes ago. This huge separation, impossible to, to cross over. It was severed because of sin. We don't even know the depths and the ramifications of all that sin did. It not only affected the world, but it affected what is known as the cosmos. That's everything. I don't know how far that extended. I kind of asked God, I said, how far did that go, Lord? Did it go into deep space? Did it go beyond the galaxies that we now know? I don't know about you, but God knows. Amen. And I know that it was a terrible thing that happened because of sin. Adam's sin messed up everything. Don't you dare blame Adam all the time as though he was such a, a, a dipstick. Amen? How about you when you sin? Dipstick. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You see, we need to understand. You see, God created us to have fellowship with him. We were meant to live according to the will of God and according to his glory. But now we're separated. And one of the most important, important questions that came down through salvific history was this, or the history of salvation was this. How will mankind get back in a relationship with God? How will he do it? Well, it started with Adam. He tried to 
get some leaves, you know, and cover himself. And that is a sign of religion. Religion always tries to cover themselves with the outward. But inward, they're still messed up. Only God can cover you. Aren't you glad we're covered by the blood? You see, man can't save himself. What they needed was a savior. They needed one, someone that was better than what they can ever produce. This is why we have Jesus. They need this. Now, you might be and say, well, I know that already. Well, you might need somebody to heal you. You might need somebody to, to help you financially. You might need some deliverance from demonic activity. Guess what? We have a Savior. Amen. We have someone that will rescue. So it's not just one thing that you've already been born again. I've already been born again. I've already been filled with the Spirit. I'm way beyond that. I want to go to more of what God has for me. I want to be all that God has for me. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I like to look beyond and go beyond what God has for us. Hallelujah. We see the answer is Jesus, and, the, and he's the only one that can do this. He's the only one. Again, he was God in the flesh. John the Baptist was a smart dude. How many like to meet John someday? Wouldn't that be cool? Hallelujah. I wonder if he'll have those, those skins on yet in heaven. No, he won't. He'll have white garments, won't he? Hallelujah. I wonder what he did with the skins. Amen? Hallelujah. And Jesus, he hung up his skins for the robe of God. That's a good message. It's time to hang up your skin. <laughs> for the robe of God, clothed in righteousness. Amen. Come on now. John was smart. He recognized Jesus. Now, we know that they played marbles when they were kids. And, you know, kind of had donkey and, and camel races down the roads together. Come on, Jesus, let's drag. Hallelujah. We know that they were relatives. But what he did was this. When Jesus came up, he actually was able to perceive spiritually and said these words, Behold, behold, look, the Lamb of God, there he is, the one who takes away the sin of the world, the hope. This is the one. It's not me, but... I am not even worthy to tie his shoes. This is the one. This is the one who we have been waiting for. Imagine knowing beyond just relational and family orientation. He went beyond that to a spiritual realm that superseded and went beyond all that to a place where he actually recognized God in the flesh. Wow, that's powerful. And so here he was, the, the hope of God. He is the answer. He is the way. He's our hope. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about this. Mankind was so lost that God had to send Jesus himself to show us how bad the situation was. We couldn't even fathom the depth of what happened. Why God allowed it is simple. He wanted you to have and still have a free will so that those who came to him and come to him come because they want to be with him, not because they have to be with him. Hallelujah. How many like to be with God? Hallelujah. Forever. So we know that Jesus is this only way. He's the only way. No other way. Nothing else can help. He's the only hope. He's the only expectation. The second thing we need to look at, Jesus said he was the truth of God. Now, truth biblically is anything that is true and right in any matter under consideration. Jesus is that. He's right about everything. Can you be healed? Yep. Can you be saved? Yep. Can you be prosperous? Yep. Can you live long? Yep. Jesus is the truth. Now, the neat thing about the Bible is such a unique thing other than any other religious book that is out there. The Bible contains things that are true and things that are not true. Things that are truthfully stated and there are statements of truth. I wonder if you got what I just said. 
When I say Jesus is the way, that is the truth. When Job said that, you know, he said that I just don't know about this. I just know that, you know, I don't know about my life and stuff like that. When he said those words, that was Job talking in the now historically written down. So the Bible contains both truth and error so we can understand what the Bible says. And that's a good thought for you to think about for a while. Hallelujah. So in reality, Jesus came to earth as the, as the ultimate and final message of God. Now here's the thing. You can either accept it or reject it. You can either sit in your seat or get up to an altar. You can either receive all that God... I'm not just talking about being saved. How many are saved here? Come on, raise your hand. There's very few people that come to church sometimes, unfortunately, that are not. We need to have more of that. Amen. But if you're already saved, I mean, you can't go back and do it again. So there's something else you might need. And guess what? Whatever you need, Jesus is the way. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So we need to understand this. And he is the truth. And what we need to understand is that he is with us all the time. And I thank God for the truth. How many thank God for the word of God? Yeah. Thy word is truth. In Jesus' name. You see, the first time that in all of human history, Jesus lived a life so great that he finally exposes God the Father. For the first time. Prior to Jesus, no one addressed God as Father. No one looked at God the Father as such. They knew God, but they didn't know him as Father God or God the Father. The only person that that brought that into being was Jesus himself. And so we have this ultimate message, this ultimate message of God. Hallelujah. No one ever did this before. He did it. He lived so close to God. He lived such an example. He was the God-man. Now, you have to understand about the God-man. He never walked as the Son of God. Never. Because if he did, we can never do what he did. He worked, walked as a man anointed, Acts 10, 38, by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed with the same Holy Spirit that you have inside of you. Can you say amen to that? And so we, he lived that and he spoke the truth so much and exemplified God so much that he says this in John 14, verse 9. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. He is the perfect representation of God the Father to us. So if you want to see how God the Father is, just look at the life of Jesus. Just think about all he did. Did Jesus cast out devils? Yes, you can have that too. Did Jesus heal everyone? Everyone? Yes, he will. Did Jesus save all that came to him? Yes, he did. And he still does. And that's the good news that we need to understand that Jesus is this truth. So it's, it doesn't stop here, though. God's mission reveals that a redemptive plan, or in other words, how God's going to do it. Here's the good news that God wants you to know. You don't have to be going to hell. Say amen. amen. Isn't that good news? Yeah. You don't have to stay sick. Isn't that great news? Amen. You don't have to be held down by bondage from the enemy. Isn't that wonderful? You don't have to be addicted to things. You can be addicted to Jesus. David was. He says, my heart is fixed. I'm trusting in the Lord. Say amen. Amen. And you don't have to be poor. God can bless you. I'm so thankful that I'm blessed, aren't you? Every need. You know, we didn't have a down Thanksgiving. You know why? God takes care of his own. Come on, you missed a good place to shout. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So we need to understand. And finally, Jesus here reveals that he is the life. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, this is so good. It says this, all things were created, all things, good, not bad. All things, good. He didn't create Lucifer or Satan. Satan is a falling being. Amen? All things. Now, in the original, before the rebellion, it was good. Everything was good. It even says that in Genesis. And all was good. Very good. 
Amen? So he created all things by him and for him. I love this scripture here. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. Yeah. Now this is very important. Because you know, if you don't know scripture well enough, you can be manipulated into things that are not true. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, which I hope some of you are addressing me today, is a cult. Okay? Is a cult. It denies the, the Trinity of God. It denies Jesus being God himself. It, it says that Jesus is a creation. If such is true, then Jesus would be a thing. Because things created are things. But here's what the Word of God says. He is before all things. Isn't that good? How can you be one of the things created if you're before all of them? You have to be God. Aren't you know you're serving the Lord and say amen, he's God? And by him all things consist. I used to wonder about this, the, the neutrons and the protons. Do you ever see these things? How they, everything is here consistently held together. You've got to understand how the God thinks. It's so vast and so big and so marvelous. Everything in the space and time, all of this held together. But neutrons and protons are not supposed to be held together. They're polar opposites. How are they now held together? Well, I'll tell you how it's held together. By him all things consist. So if we take Jesus, the hope of all of the world, all of humanity, all of creation, out of the equation, all you would have is nothing. It would be nothing. It would just explode. And whatever would create it after that, I have no idea, probably nothing. Because of Jesus. Did you know your life consists because of him? It's held together. It's held together. All those times, you screwy little thing, and I'm screwy too. All those screwy things. Aren't you glad that God loves screwy people? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You messed up, screwed up, and did everything good. into how am I going to get out of this? And God has some way, somehow, just put it all back together again. And better to be four. That's the word restore. It means better than before. God will make you better. If you're healed, have cancer. God will make you better than before. If you're poor, God will make you better than before. If you're a sinner, God will make you better than before. Amen. Man, that's good. That's good. He'll make you better than before. He does it all the time. Hallelujah. In other words, Jesus, as the life, holds everything together. Jesus doesn't preach life. He is life. Amen. Hallelujah. He is that. He saves us, spirit, soul, and body. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 tells us that Christ, before Christ, we were all dead spiritually. That's why I don't really like the Old Testament as much as I like the New Will you shut up, please? I'm going to have to turn it off next time. Hallelujah. But it tells us that we were dead spiritually. You know, the Old Testament is a great book. It, it, it's a portrait of the physical in compared to the spiritual and the new. So when the Old Testament talks about a pig, okay, the New Testament understanding of that is demonic. Okay? It's just a physical representation. In the, other, in the Old Testament, when, they, when the demonic spirits uh, laid with the, 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 the daughters of humanity and created giants, it, it's a physical representation of the spiritual truth in the new, where there's now been placed in a, a person in a new some spiritual thing. Some spiritual thing. So we need to understand about what God is doing here. Before we were saved, we were spiritually dead. Old Testament people are spiritually dead. 
New Testament people are alive. Matter of fact, we're greater than John the Baptist. Are you all here today? Hallelujah. Why are we greater than John the Baptist? Because John the Baptist was Old Testament. John the Baptist was not born again. John the Baptist did not be, was not filled with the Holy Spirit like you and I. But you and I are born again of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit himself lives inside. Come on now, people. Every one of us. And we are new creations. New creations. We're new people. The one that was before no longer exists. It died. We were dead and now alive in Christ. Aren't you happy for that? Say amen. amen. Come on up, guys. Hallelujah. So Jesus is our life giver. In coming to the earth, he conquered the ultimate death, the ultimate enemy. You know what that is? Death. Did you know you're never going to die? You didn't get that one. There must have been something wrong right here. You're never going to die. Your body might go, but you're going to get a new one. Isn't that neat? No more restrictions. No more drawing towards sin. No more pain in the neck, things like that. A whole new body. A whole new person. Spirit, soul, and body. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. You have newness of life. Here's what you need to understand. Jesus came. He is our hope. That's what this is all about. So, you know, instead of just looking at Christmas as Christmas, look at it as, this is my hope. This is why. This is what it's all about. The coming of Jesus. He's here. He's now. He's forever. And you can live with him. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. He offers just this to you right now. He offers a restored relationship to God. He offers you a healed body. He offers you a new life. He offers you a true knowledge of truth. He offers you a life that will never end. And all you got to do is start walking in it and start believing and trusting in him. Amen. If you know him and you're not ashamed of him, I want you to stand to your feet right now all over this place. Thank you, Lord. Someone is having some eye issues, of pain behind their eyes. I don't know who and where you are in this building, but God wants to touch you. God wants to minister to you and heal you. Why don't that's you? Just lift your hands right now. Where are you? Good, good. Lift it up high. That's it. Somebody get around here, girl. Ladies, look around. Now come over here. Come on, go across the aisle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just thank you for healing our sister. We command every generational curse, every curse spoken on by herself over her life, everything that's not of you, we break that power right now. We say to you, Satan, be gone. You leave her body. You eye problem, leave her body right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we command healing and health in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your eyes. Go ahead, over your glasses.
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let that pain be gone. In, say this out loud, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name. And lift your hands, girlfriend, and thank God. And stay in that, stay in it, stay in it, stay in it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Some, some, there's several of you here that are having some really deep financial problems this time of the year. And you're worried about Christmas, oh my. And you're asking God you need help and you don't know what to do. Now that seems like a typical problem, but God has you here and he's speaking to you right now. So if that's you, just lift your hands right now, wherever you are in this place, that's it. In Jesus' name, that's it, good. So Father God, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. You're pouring out on these people. Lord, that you make a way that their Christmas will be a nice one. We thank you, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Now, most importantly here, before we go, if you're here and not fully committed to God, then this is your time where you can surrender your life and say, Jesus, be Lord of every, do you know there's more areas in your life to surrender? So right now, with every hand raised, everybody all across this place, say, Lord, I surrender. Come on, say it out. I surrender every area of my life to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Now lift it up. Come on, lift up praise all across this place. We magnify you, Lord. We just thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so wonderful. You're so kind. And we thank you for this day. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Go ahead, brother. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory where my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of Kings calls me His own, beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus
Because you're his. You're his and his alone. The hope of all of creation is seated now on the throne of your heart, like Pastor just said. And I want you to believe that as a spiritual reality, but also a present reality. That we put our hope in him. He's our beautiful Savior. He's our living hope. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah, raise the one who set me free.
Father, I thank you for the covering. Under the shadow of the Almighty. That you protect us. And we have the spiritual authority and power to stop the enemy. That these people, as they go, they go through, they go forth not as weak souls, but as spiritual giants. We thank you, Father, for total victory in the wonderful, I want you to shout, in the wonderful name of, shout it out! Come on, in Jesus' name! people of God and God is inside of you. God bless you. <laughs> well, I feel hope in this house today. I mean, he's going to take some hope home with you. I want to tell you, we need it in the day and time that we're living. I've got three things for you to do. Don't forget, next Sunday, bring your gloves of love. It's the deadline for it. And then two things to do today. If you would like to go on the uh, trip to Tanglewood, you need to sign up on the way out. I'll be out there to take your money. And then also, we've got bells at the back door. Get your bell of hope, and let's hang it on the tree. God bless you, and be blessed. Then came the morning that sealed the promise.